To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. So, I am going to continue with the lesson Electrochemistry. Now, in the first chapter, we discussed what happens when we put a piece of zinc metal sheet into dilute sulfuric acid. So, there you can remember the zinc plate dissolves. That is why, that is because the zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus ions and the zinc 2 plus ions leaving the electrons on the zinc plate go, goes into the solution. At the same time, there are H plus ions in the solution. And those H plus ions take up electrons and become H2 gas. So when you add those two reactions, and you all know those two reactions are known as half ionic reactions. Because it's only part of the reaction that is explained in each of the reactions, including electrons and ions. Then you add them together, you get the balanced ionic equation that is Zn solid plus 2H plus ions giving rise to Zn equals and H2 gas. So from there we were able to write the balanced chemical equation. That is where zinc reacts with sulfuric acid giving rise to zinc sulfate and H2 gas. And you all understood if we can make the exchange of electrons, zinc losing electrons electrons accumulating on the zinc plate and H plus taking up the electrons. If we can make that exchange of electrons to happen through an external conductor, there will be electricity generated. So that is what we are trying to understand here. To understand that, we will have to do this activity first. So the activity observe the functioning of a cell the electrochemical cell and to do that we need these materials. So here we need a beaker, into that we will be taking sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid and this has to be dilute sulfuric acid, I will write it here, it has to be dilute sulfuric acid. Then like I told you all, now earlier we had only one metal. In order to have two terminals, we need to have two metals. And then only we can connect the two metals by an external conductor and we can make electricity to flow through that. So to do that, we need zinc and copper. Here we are using zinc and copper. You, will, you can use two different metals. Any two different metals combination can be used, but you have to make sure the re metals are not extremely reactive. For example, you all are familiar with the highly reactive metals like sodium, potassium. We don't react them with acids. So here, since we are using sulfuric acid, they should be moderately reactive metal. Not highly reactive, not very less reactive or inert metals. They have to be moderately reactive. So we here we are going to use zinc and copper. And then we need to have conducting wires. Conducting, conducting wires and also we need to have an ammeter to observe that current is flowing through the external conductor. So these are the materials. We need a beaker, we need sulfuric acid, we need zinc, zinc sheet, copper sheet, then conducting wires and an ammeter. So like we did before, we will be taking sulfuric acid into the beaker at the same time, we'll be connecting the zinc and copper metals using the conducting wire along with the ammeter and then we will dip them into sulfuric acid. Then you will have to observe what happens during the reaction. So we will discuss the method again and then we will do the activity. 
the method. This is what we are going to do. So here we have the zinc metal and this is the copper metal. Copper metal and we have the dilute sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. And we have We take them into the beaker and that as you all know is the ammeter and those are the conducting wires. So this is the ammeter conducting wire and the beaker. So like I said we have the zinc strip. You have the copper strip, you connect them using the conducting wire and in the middle we connect the ammeter also and then you take dilute sulfuric acid into a beaker and you dip the two strips into this dilute sulfuric acid and you have to observe the ammeter. What is ammeter used for? To observe whether current is flowing through the circuit or these conducting wires. So if you see a deflection in the ammeter, then you know that current is flowing. So that is what you need to observe here. You have to look at the ammeter. In addition to that, you need to look at the metal strips also. You need to observe whether there is a change taking place near any of these metal strips. Is that clear student? That is what you need to remember. So this is the method, here you can see, connect the zinc strip and the copper strip to the ammeter using connecting wires as shown in the figure. Conducting wires or connecting wires are both the same. Then immerse the two metal strips in the beaker containing dilute sulfuric acid and you need to record your observation. So that again is an activity that you can understand what to do. So now we'll go to the lab and do this activity. Okay students, so in the previous activity you all saw how or what an electrode is. When we dip a zinc metal into sulfuric acid, you were able to see the gas bubbles evolving. So I explained to you all that the zinc metal, it undergoes oxidation. We didn't use the term there but you all are familiar with the term. Oxidation means a species loses electrons and becomes the product. So here zinc metal loses electrons and becomes zinc 2 plus ion. So that is oxidation taking place and inside the sulfuric acid. There is H plus ion, sulfate ions and OH minus ions. There are H plus ions take up electrons from the zinc metal and get reduced. That is they become H2 gas. So that is why you were able to see the evolving of gas bubbles near the zinc plate. So there, there is a transfer of electrons. Zinc metal loses electrons, hydrogen gains electrons. So if we can make these electrons to move through an external conductor, say the conducting wires, then of course we can make electricity to flow. So that is how we are going to do this activity. We are trying to make the electrons to flow through a conductor, an external conductor. To do that, we need two electrodes. So we have a zinc plate here and copper plate there, two metals, zinc and copper. And the electrolyte solution is the same. It is sulfuric acid. It can conduct electricity and here I have an ammeter. So ammeter you all can see it is connected to the two metals and if we dip the metals in sulfuric acid you will see the change taking place. You have to observe the metals as well as the ammeter. So here I am going to dip both the plates and we should make sure that they don't touch each other so that you can see the changes taking place. Now as I dip the metals you were able to see that near the zinc electrode there is like bubbles forming that is because you all know you are familiar with the activity series students. 
the zinc metal is more reactive because of that there is a certain amount of reaction taking place but we are concerned with the re reaction that is related to electrochemical cell. So you all can see the ammeter shows a reading there is a deflection so that means there is current flowing and now you can see here you can see near the copper plate also there are gas bubbles evolving. So the zinc plate is dissolving that is one observation and you can see gas bubbles evolve near the copper plate. Can you all see that clearly? At the same time there is a deflection in ammeter. So that means current is flowing through the external circuit. Is that clear to you all student? So there is the zinc plate that dissolves that reacts and also near the copper plate there are gas bubbles evolving and at the same time there is deflection in the ammeter. So if there is deflection in the ammeter that means current is flowing through the external conductor. So when you dip two electrodes into a particular solution that is sulfuric acid we dip copper and zinc. There is a chemical change taking place. Zinc gets converted to zinc 2 plus ions. At the same time, near the copper, there is hydrogen that is H plus ions being converted to H2 gas. So there is a transfer of electrons. H plus ions take up electrons and become H2 gas. Zinc loses electrons and becomes zinc plus ions. So these electrons travel through the external conductor. That is why there is a flow of electricity and you see the deflection in ammeter. So in this, we had a chemical reaction taking place when we dip both zinc and copper into sulfuric acid and due to that chemical change, there is electricity generated. That is what we call as an electrochemical cell. So for the electrochemical cell to be complete and for current to flow, electricity to flow, you need to have two electrodes. That is what you need to remember here. And also students, since zinc metal dissolves, the zinc 2 plus ions go into the solution, leaving the electrons in the zinc metal. So because of that, the zinc metal becomes negatively charged at the same time. Hydrogen takes up electrons from copper. So because of that, copper is going to lose electrons. Therefore, copper becomes positively charged. So copper is positively charged, zinc is negatively charged and near the zinc, it is oxidation. Zinc losing electrons. Because of that, we call the zinc metal as the anode and near the copper metal, Hydrogen is taking up electrons and becoming hydrogen gas. That reaction, that is a half reaction, that is known as reduction. And reduction takes place near cathode. So here cathode is positive and reduction takes place there. Near the zinc plate, oxidation occurs, therefore it is the anode. But since the electrons accumulate there, the anode becomes negatively charged. And you all know electrons flow from negative terminal to positive terminal through the external circuit. At the same time, electricity flows from positive terminal to negative terminal. That is how the electrochemical cell works. So students, you all saw three observations. You saw the zinc plate dissolve. You saw the gas bubbles evolving near the copper electrode and also you were able to see the deflection in the ammeter. So deflection in the ammeter confirms that there is a current flowing through the external conductor and in these two there are chemical changes taking place. So gas bubbles it is hydrogen gas H plus ions taking up electrons getting reduced and therefore we call the copper electrode as the cathode. Wherever reduction takes place, it is cathode and here it is the positive electrode. And zinc dissolves. So there zinc becomes zinc 2 plus ions. So therefore that is an oxidation reaction. So because of that, 
it is the anode and here in anode that is the zinc plate there is electrons so anode becomes negatively charged so these are the observations of this activity to confirm this observation again what we will do is instead of an ammeter we will use a galvanometer you are familiar with the galvanometer there you can from the direct deflection the direction of the deflection you all know how the current flows in the circuit so i will remove the ammeter connect a galvanometer and show you all what happens there so now i have the galvanometer connected here you can see you know the difference this is a center zero galvanometer so current the deflect can take place in this direction towards this direction that means the current flows this way from copper to zinc if the indicator moves in this direction that means current flows from zinc to copper so that is what you need to observe when i put the two electrodes the metals that is zinc and copper into dilute sulfuric acid you have to observe the direction of the deflection so here students when we dip the two electrodes that is zinc and copper you all know zinc is the negative electrode or the anode and copper is the cathode positive electrode. So when we dip it in you can see the direction of the galvanometer. Now I am taking it out and when I dip it you can see the direction of the galvanometer. So if you look at the direction of the galvanometer it moves towards this direction that means current flows this way so here current goes into the copper electrode in the solution current flows from copper to zinc copper is positive zinc is negative so that also you all know current flows from positive to negative so that is the convention you all have to understand that convention in the solution the conventional current flows from positive terminal to negative terminal so it goes in this direction that's why you see the galvanometer also deflect in the same direction if i put it again observe the direction clearly copper is the positive terminal zinc is the negative terminal so the current flow is in that direction positive to negative terminal so i am sure students in this process that is the process of electrochemical cell now here we are trying to understand the function of an electrochemical cell a chemical reaction leads to the flow of current so the zinc electrode there is oxidation taking place so it is the anode and because the zinc metal loses electrons electrons get accumulated in the zinc plate this becomes negatively charged at the same time hydrogen ions from the solution go towards the cathode that is the copper metal where they take up electrons from copper and become H2 gas so copper loses electrons and becomes positively charged so copper cathode is the positively charged electrode and current flows from positive terminal to negative terminal while electrons flow from negative terminal to positive terminal that is how the electrochemical cell works and students for the same activity now we initially we use the ammeter where you saw the reflection so you know that current flows through the cell then now i have used the galvanometer that also can be used and here you can see the direction of the current instead of these two we can also use a bulb to observe that current flows through the cell so here we have the solution that is sulfuric acid and zinc and copper as the metals or the electrodes then we call this cell as a simple cell or simple voltaic cell so to understand the function of the simple voltaic cell a little bit more what i will do is i will replace the galvanometer with a light bulb there are also you can see the change those are different ways of observing that the current flows through the cell or current is generated by a chemical reaction so to do that we'll replace the galvanometer with a bulb and observe the function of a simple cell so here students again i have taken sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid into a larger beaker so that i can insert the two metal plates 
Here you can see this is a zinc metal. That is one electrode, the negative electrode or the anode. And here we have copper. So this is the positive electrode which is the cathode there. Then here the bulb is connected to both the electrodes. You can see that. And the electrodes are connected to a wooden plank so that it's easy to handle the electrodes. Now when I dip the two electrodes into the sulfuric acid solution, you all have to look at the bulb as well as you can see the other observations also. So now I will dip it into the solution. Can you see the bulb lighting? Can you see the bulb lighting? You all were able to see that the bulb lights. When I insert the two metals, zinc and copper into dilute sulfuric acid, you were able to see the bulb light. So we have looked at three different ways in which you can observe the function of an electrochemical cell. So by a chemical reaction, electricity is produced. For the chemical reaction to take place and electricity to be generated, we need two electrodes. One has to be the anode where the oxidation takes place and that becomes the negative electrode. And the other electrode is the cathode where the reduction takes place and that is the positive electrode. So here zinc is the negative anode and copper is the positive cathode. And electrons flow from negative terminal to positive terminal or the negative electrode to the positive electrode while current flows from conventional current flows from positive terminal to negative terminal. So we can confirm the flow of current either by using a bulb, a galvanometer or an ammeter. So from all these students, I am sure you all can understand clearly the function of a simple electrochemical cell. Okay students, so you were able to see clearly what happens during the activity that is when you dip a zinc plate and a metal plate connected by a conducting wire or a connecting wire and they were immersed in dilute sulfuric acid. What were the observations? You were able to see the ammeter deflect. That was one main observation. Then what did you all see? You were able to see the zinc plate dissolving and also you were able to see that the gas bubbles were evolved near the copper electrode. In addition to that, there was something else. You were also able to see the evolving or liberation of gas bubbles near the zinc electrode as well. But there you have to remember students, you can remember the activity series. Zinc is highly reactive when compared to copper. Zinc is more reactive than copper. Because of that, due to the reactivity also, there is a certain amount of reaction taking place near the zinc electrode that is like the normal way zinc plus sulfuric acid giving rise to zinc sulfate plus H2 gas. So that is why you were able to see the liberation of gas bubbles near zinc but here our main observations what we need to know or what we need to understand are the dissolving of the zinc plate as well as the gas bubbles evolving near the copper electrode and the deflection of the ammeter. Those are the important observations. In addition to that, like I told you all before also, these are chemical reactions which release heat. So these are exothermic reactions. If you carry on the reaction for a long time and then if you touch the beaker, you will feel that the beaker becomes warm. But that is not required for our scope here because here we are trying to understand the function of an electrochemical cell. So there are the important observations are zinc plate dissolves, hydrogen gas bubbles evolve at the copper electrode and also there is deflection in the ammeter. Three main observations. So that is what I am going to write down here. First observation, there is, there is deflection in the ammeter. 
then zinc sheet dissolves gradually you don't see it happen happening immediately although you can see the reaction but it takes a long time for the sheet to dissolve completely we stop the reaction after some time so you were able to see the dissolving of zinc sheet and then gas bubbles bubbles evolve near the copper metal so those are the three observations that we need to consider so when we say there is a deflection in the ammeter what is the meaning of that or what can we conclude from that you all know ammeter deflects only when there is current flowing through the conducting wires so here also we can confirm that there was electricity or current flowing through the ammeter so how did we get that electricity we did not have any external power supply we did not have any batteries connected but you saw these two changes the zinc sheet dissolving and gas bubbles evolving near the copper electrode so from those observations you all know that there is a chemical reaction taking place and due to these chemical reactions there is electricity generated so that is how an electrochemical cell function now we need to understand the reactions taking place during this functioning of the electrochemical cell as well so these were the observations now let us try to understand what happens here now you had the beaker containing sulfuric acid we had the ammeter there so this is copper this is zinc and that is sulfuric acid so copper solid zinc also solid now you are familiar with the physical states i'm going to write everything with that and here we had h2so4 aqueous now since h2so4 is a strong acid what happens it dissociates complete so here this will become h plus 2 h plus aqueous and so4 2 minus aqueous so what happens there in this solution you have h plus aqueous and so4 2 minus aqueous now here there are two metals zinc and copper now you have to remember students in the activity series you have to remember that order can you recall the activity series potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium zinc iron tin lead then you have hydrogen after that you have copper mercury silver platinum and gold so in that zinc is more reactive than copper that you have to remember zinc is more reactive than copper reactivity you can remember so because of that zinc prefers to react first i mentioned that before also zinc prefers to react first so this zinc metal tends to become zinc 2 plus aqueous losing two electrons that is similar to what happened before also zinc becomes zinc 2 plus aqueous losing two electrons so what happens there the zinc 2 plus goes into solution that is why aqueous leaving the electrons on the zinc sheet 
Now earlier we did not have this conducting wire. But we have the conducting wire and an additional metal there. So because of that, the electrons start to flow through this external connecting wire. You have to remember that. And since there are a lot of electrons accumulating here, zinc goes into the solution as zinc 2 plus ions and the electrons accumulate on the zinc plate or the zinc sheet, what happens is the zinc sheet becomes negatively charged. At the same time, electrons start to flow from the zinc sheet towards the copper sheet. Therefore, what happens is the H plus ions in the solution get attracted towards the copper sheet. And there what happens is 2H plus aqueous take up electrons and become H2 gas. Now this happens here. From here electrons are taken up by the H plus ions and they get converted to H2 gas. So what is happening there? Electrons are being taken up by H plus ions. So from here they take up electrons. Because of that the copper sheet becomes positively charged. And this makes the electrons to flow further from zinc to copper. More electrons start flowing from zinc to copper. So when electrons flow from zinc to copper, what happens to current? Current flows from copper to zinc. Current flows from copper to zinc. That is how the electrochemical cell works. Is that clear to you all students? Try to understand this again. Now we have dilute sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid dissociates completely to give rise to 2H plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous. At the same time, zinc is more reactive than copper because of that, although we have both zinc and copper inside the acid, zinc dissolves than copper. So that is why zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus aqueous losing electrons. And these electrons are left on the zinc sheet. Therefore, the zinc sheet becomes negatively charged. So zinc 2 plus aqueous ions, the zinc 2 plus ions go into solution. That is why we have zinc 2 plus aqueous here. At the same time, the H plus ions from the solution go towards the metal copper. And from there, they start taking up electrons. Because of that the copper sheet becomes positively charged. So now there are two charges negative and positive. That makes the electrons from zinc to flow towards copper. So when there is flow of electrons through an external conductor what will happen? Electricity will flow. So here current will flow from copper to zinc. Current flows from copper to zinc. Can you all understand that? Now there was chemical reaction that gave rise to the flow of current. So electricity was generated from a chemical reaction. Electrochemical cell. So this is an electrochemical cell. Chemical cell. Is that clear to you all? This is how the electrochemical cell works. So here you can see one half reaction. What is this? Losing electron. So this is an oxidation half reaction. And on this side we have H plus taking up electrons. That is another half reaction and that is a 
reduction half reaction i will write those also again if we summarize all the reactions here zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus a equals losing electrons we will take that as the first reaction this is an oxidation half reaction like earlier students i'll write it once here and again in the slides after this also i'll be explaining the process again so that is one reaction then we have h plus ions from the solution taking up electrons becoming h2 gas this is the second reaction and this is the reduction half reaction reduction half reaction so when you add 1 plus 2 you will get a similar reaction as before 1 zinc solid from 2 to H plus aqueous plus 2 electrons giving rise to zinc 2 plus aqueous here you can see two electrons plus H2 gas. Check whether I have included all the species. Zinc solid, zinc 2 plus, two electrons. 2H plus aqueous, two electrons and H2 gas there. From this you can cut off the electrons. Now this and this can be cancelled off. So what do you get? We get the balanced ionic equation Zn solid plus 2H plus aqueous giving rise to Zn2 plus aqueous plus H2 gas and we call this as the balanced ionic equation then you all know there is sulfate ions in the solution why here you can remember this became H plus and SO4 2 minus so the SO4 2 minus is still there in the solution so because of that what can we do we can add SO4 2 minus to either side of the reaction. So there you will get zinc solid plus 2H plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous giving rise to Zn2 plus aqueous plus H2 gas and SO4 2 minus aqueous. Here what will happen? These two together is H2SO4. These two together is zinc sulfate. So we will finally get the balanced chemical equation. Zinc solid plus H2SO4 aqueous. Zinc sulfate plus H2 gas. Now this is the balanced chemical equation. Now students, if you look at all these equations from here, now you might be wondering, Earlier we had zinc in sulfuric acid. We got the same set of equations. If you like, I will quickly go back and show you all. If you, you can remember the same equation. Final equation, 
zinc solid H2SO4 equals ZNSO4 equals H2. And even the half equations were the same. Zinc becoming zinc 2 plus, 2H plus taking up electrons, everything was the same. So, I'll go back. Here also you have the same equations. So, why do we need two electrodes? Or what is the purpose of having two electrodes? That is where the flow of electricity takes place. So, here. The main difference you all have to understand is there are two metals, two different metals, zinc and copper. And zinc is more reactive because of that zinc dissolves. But the H plus taking up electrons takes place near the copper electrode. And the, and the electrons are taken from the copper electrode. That is why they become negatively and positively charged. Zinc becomes negatively charged and copper becomes positively charged. So it happens in two different places. Earlier it happened only in one place, one metal. But here we have two metals. Both the reactions occur at two different sites. The oxidation occurs at zinc, reduction occurs at copper and zinc becomes negatively charged, copper becomes positively charged and there is electrons flowing from zinc to copper. Therefore, current flows from copper to zinc. That is why the ammeter deflects. So that is the difference you all have to understand students. If you just look at the equations, you might feel, okay, it's the same. So why bother putting another metal and connecting everything? But when you really understand what happens here, you will know that here, although the same half ionic equations are happening or half ionic reactions are happening, they happen at two different places. That is why we are able to get the negative charge and the positive charge and there is a flow of electrons which gives rise to the flow of current. That is very, very important. And because of that only, this becomes an electrochemical cell. Is that clear, students? So from this, you have to remember Oxidation half reaction takes place at the zinc. And there you were able to understand that the zinc plate becomes negatively charged. And by convention students, you all have to remember this. Always the electrode. Now all early also I told you all zinc in sulfuric acid is one electrode. The same way copper in sulfuric acid is also another electrode. So since we have both zinc and copper in sulfuric acid, we call them as electrodes. Electrodes, there are two. So electrodes. And here zinc becomes the negative electrode. Zinc becomes the negative electrode. While this happens near the copper. So there, the second reaction takes place near copper. So because of that, copper becomes the positive electrode. So zinc is the negative electrode, copper is the positive electrode. And by convention, you have to remember a place where oxidation half reaction takes place is known as the anode. I will use another color so that you can remember easily. This is called an anode. And a place where reduction occurs is known as a cathode. This particular convention never changes. 
always oxidation takes place at the anode reduction takes place at the cathode so in this electrochemical cell oxidation occurs at zinc so zinc is the anode and anode is the negative electrode why because electrons accumulate at the zinc electrode you have to remember all that the same way if you look at the reduction half reaction that occurs near copper and copper is the cathode because the reduction takes place copper becomes the cathode and because electrons are taken from copper copper becomes positively charged so current flows from positive to negative electron flows from negative to positive so if i summarize all those again if we summarize that i will use lines to indicate the two metals so here we have the ammeter this is copper this is zinc so here this becomes the negative electrode and oxidation occurs here oxidation occurs because of that this is the anode zinc is negative and there is oxidation taking place because of that it is anode at the same time near copper it becomes positive and here there is reduction taking place and because of that it is the cathode you have to remember all that oxidation near zinc that is anode and that is negatively charged reduction near copper and therefore it is the cathode and it is positively charged so how do the electrons flow electrons flow in this direction current flows in this direction current i flows in so electrons flow from zinc to copper current flows from copper to zinc electron flow from zinc that is negatively charged to copper that is positively charged and current flows from copper that is positively charged to zinc that is negatively charged is that clear student so that is how the electrochemical cell works so we have two terminals one is the negative terminal the other one is the positive terminal and you all know in a dry cell a battery current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal through the external conductor so here this is the external conductor at the same time electrons flow from negative terminal to positive terminal is that clear student so these are the things that you have to remember in relation to an electrochemical cell so again like i said i will be discussing the same reactions in relation to the observation in the next slide as well so from the activity you all know there was deflection in the ammeter so that confirms that there was current flow and the current flow was observed because of all these reactions the oxidation reduction accumulation of electrons zinc becoming the negative electrode and copper becoming the positive electrode 
the flow of electrons from zinc to copper and flow of current from copper to zinc. And if you remember, in the lab, we use the galvanometer. So if we use a galvanometer in place of ammeters, what will happen? Galvanometer has the zero in the middle. So depending on the direction of the current flow, galvanometer will deflect in that particular direction. So if you had a galvanometer instead of an ammeter, the deflection will be this way. Because current flows from copper to Z. So the galvanometer will deflect in this direction. But an ammeter deflects only in one direction. So because of that, it will only show the deflection, but the galvanometer will show the direction as well. You all have to keep that in mind also. So with that students, I'm going to move on to the next slide where I will discuss the reactions again. So let us explore the reasons for these observations. So what were the observations? There is deflection in the ammeter, zinc plate dissolves and gas bubbles evolve near the copper plate. So from that we were able to confirm that there is current flowing because there is deflection in the ammeter. And I told you all that we discussed the reactions taking place in the cell also. So again we will try to understand that one more time. So here too zinc atoms become zinc ions. So here you can see Zinc atoms become zinc ions, leaving electrons on the metal. Therefore, the zinc strip dissolves. So that is one observation. The electrons accumulated on the zinc strip flow towards the copper strip through an external wire. That also I explained. Electrons from zinc strip, they flow towards the copper strip through an external wire. This flow of electrons is considered an electric current. So this is important. The flow of electrons is considered an electric current. That is why you get the deflection in the ammeter. Deflection of the ammeter shows that an electric current flows through the circuit. So deflection of the ammeter. Hence, in this setup, H plus ions in the solution move toward the copper strip and receive electrons from it. So all what we discussed, H plus ions in the solution move toward the copper strip and receive electrons from it. Therefore, hydrogen gas bubbles are liberated at the copper strip. So those were the observations. I'm sure you all can remember the reactions also. So with that, I'll move on to the next slide where again we summarize the reactions. So reaction at the zinc strip. What is the reaction taking place at the zinc strip? Now you know zinc is more reactive than copper. So zinc solid dissolves to form zinc 2 plus aqueous losing electrons. And by now you know this is an oxidation. Zinc loses electron. So this is an oxidation. And reaction at the copper strip. What happened there? H plus ions come closer to the copper strip, take up electrons from the copper strip and they become H2 gas. So two H plus ions in the aqueous state take up two electrons and become H2 gas and we label this as the first reaction and this as the second reaction. So you can remember the two reactions. Reaction at the zinc strip, Zn solid becomes Zn2 plus aqueous and loses two electrons. Reaction at the copper strip, 2 H plus aqueous, 2 H plus ions take up two electron and become H2 gas. In the above reaction, it was confirmed that an electron current flows from zinc to copper in the external wire. So this is also something I told you all. You can see electron current flows from zinc to copper.
copper in the external wire. Why? Zinc was the negative electrode, copper was the positive electrode. So, electrons flow from zinc to copper. A current of electrons means an electric current. In this, a chemical reaction has generated an electric current. So, the second point that you need to remember, a current of electrons means an electric current. So, in this, a chemical reaction has generated an electric current. That is why we call it an electrochemical set. A setup of this kind used to generate electricity by a chemical reaction is known as an electrochemical cell. So, electrochemical cell, you have to remember that as well. The conducting substances dipped in the electrolyte here are called electrodes. So, I have introduced all the terms in the previous discussion itself. So, the conducting substances dipped in the electrolyte are known as electrodes. So, all the new terms, electrochemical cell, electrodes, but already I have introduced oxidation, reduction, anode, cathode. We will discuss that in the slides after these. So, here again to read, in the above reaction, it was confirmed that an electron current flows from zinc to copper. So, zinc is the negative electrode, copper is the positive electrode. So, here you can remember zinc strip is the negative electrode and copper strip is the positive electrode. So, from zinc to copper, electrons flow. A current of electrons means an electric current and in this, a chemical reaction has generated an electric current. A setup of this kind used to generate electricity by a chemical reaction is known as an electrochemical cell. And the conducting substances dipped in the electrolyte here are called electrodes. So, all the terms and the reactions. I'll move on to the next slide and continue. In the above cell, zinc strip and copper strip act as electrodes. So, in the above, zinc strip and copper strip act as electrodes. The balanced ionic equation obtained by adding the half reactions 1 and 2 above is the electrochemical reaction taking place in the cell. Now, there are half ionic equations, the half ionic reactions taking place. When you add them together, you get the electrochemical reaction. So, what is that? If we add 1 plus 2, you can remember we had zinc solid, then 2 H plus aqueous and there were 2 electrons giving rise to Z then 2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons and H2 gas. So, by now, you all know we can cancel off the electrons. Same number of electrons on either side of the arrow, it, get, it gets cancelled off. So, you get the reaction as zinc solid plus 2 H plus aqueous giving rise to zinc 2 plus aqueous and H2 gas. And that is the balanced ionic equation or the electrochemical reaction. So, that will be the balanced ionic equation or what we have as electrochemical reaction. Electrochemical reaction. Because it is the reaction taking place in the electrochemical cell. But here still we have the charges. So, to balance the charges, what do we need to do? We need to add sulfate ions. So, if we add sulfate ions to both sides, what do we get? We get the 
final complete balanced chemical equation. So if I write that also, now by now you are used to it, zinc solid plus H2SO4 aqueous will give rise to zinc sulfate aqueous plus H2 gas. So that is the complete equation. Balanced chemical equation. So this is the balanced chemical equation. So here we had the balanced ionic equation, here we have the balanced chemical equation. What is the difference? Here we have ions. Here we don't have ions, we have all the species, those are neutral species, the reactants and the products. Is that clear to you all students? So those are the reactions. Then I introduce the terms cathode, anode, oxidation, reduction and the positive and the negative electrodes. That is what I am going to discuss after this. So let us further consider the reaction occurring at the zinc electrode in the above cell. So we are going to consider the zinc electrode. You have to remember zinc electrode. If you recall the electrochemical cell, you all can remember what happened there. Zinc electrode, what happened? Now we had the cell, sulfuric acid, zinc and copper. There was the conducting wire. So this is copper, this is zinc. Zinc becomes zinc 2 plus aqueous by losing two electrons. And the electrons accumulate here because of that this becomes the negative electrode and when a species loses electrons, zinc solid loses electrons, what do we call it? We call it oxidation and where does oxidation occur? It occurs at the anode. Is that clear to you? So this was the first reaction that we saw and here there is H2SO4 that also you all know students. So zinc solid loses electrons becomes zinc 2 plus aqueous that is oxidation and because of that it is known as the anode and because the electrons are left behind on the metal electrode it becomes negatively charged. So now if we consider the reaction. Let us further consider the reactions occurring at the zinc electrode in the above cell. So here zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus aqueous by losing electrons. So the term oxidation. I told you all oxidation is when a species loses electrons. We call it oxidation. So we will have to define that. So if we are to define oxidation, I told you all when a species loses electrons, it is known as oxidation. So here we can say loss of electrons, electrons from a species. Now when we say species, it can be an atom. It can be a molecule or it can even be an ion. Here zinc is an atom. So atom loses an electron or molecule can lose an electron and ion also can lose electrons. It can be one or more than one electron. So loss of electrons from a species is known as oxidation, is known as as oxidation. Then you all know 
metals dipped in a acid solution where the reactions taking place are known as electrodes. Metals dipped in the acid solution where the reactions take place or the changes take place are known as electrodes. So anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place. So anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place. And when we say half reaction, this is a half reaction and here it is an oxidation taking place. Therefore, this is known as oxidation half reaction. So the same reaction, we rewrite it here. Zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus equals by losing two electrons. So if they specifically tell you all to write the oxidation half reaction, you write only this. If they just say write the half reactions taking place in the cell, you have to write both oxidation and reduction. So this is the oxidation half reaction and ne negative electrode is the zinc electrode. So here we can say electrons lost by zinc atoms remain on the zinc metal it can be the sheet or the strip so electrons lost by zinc atoms remain on the zinc metal therefore zinc becomes the the negative electro so you have to remember zinc oxidation so anode and it is the negative electrode. This is important. So zinc oxidation takes place there, therefore it becomes the anode and because electrons accumulate on that it becomes the negative electrode. This is like a summary students, you all have to keep this in mind. And remember, these two never change. Always oxidation means it is the anode. Wherever the oxidation takes place, it is the anode. But the sign, the charge of the anode can vary. In an electrochemical cell, it is negatively charged. Anodes are negatively charged in the electrochemical cells. So therefore, zinc where oxidation takes place, it acts as the anode and it is the negative electrode. So that is like the summary of the reactions taking place near the zinc electrode. So from the electrochemical cell, you can understand this. Zinc solid becomes zinc 2 plus equals losing electrodes. And then we defined or we understood what these are. Oxidation means loss of electrons from a species. It can be an atom, molecule or an ion. When we say ion, you all know ferrous, Fe2+, plus, Fe3+. Plus. So Fe2 plus ions can lose an electron to become Fe3 plus ions. So there ion can lose an electron. The same way a species, a molecule also can lose an electron and we become plus charges. So you are familiar with NH4 plus ions. So that is a molecular ion. 
So similar to that, it can be any species. Atom, molecule or ion can lose an electron. Then the reaction is known as oxidation. And always oxidation takes place at the anode. Is anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place. Then oxidation half reaction is this. Zinc solid becoming zinc 2 plus A equals losing electrons. And finally, we have the negative electrode. Electrons lost by zinc atoms remain on the zinc metal. Therefore, zinc becomes the negative electrode. So, this is like the summer. Is that clear to you? So, then we look at the reactions taking place at the cathode. Let us further consider the reaction occurring at the copper electrode. That is going to be the cathode. So, like I told you all, you can remember the cell. So, here we have the cell with dilute sulfuric acid and the two electrodes. Ammeter connected by the external conducting wire. This is the copper electrode. And here we have sulfuric acid. Now, you have the zinc. We have H2SO4. But you all know H2SO4 becomes H plus N SO4 to minus. Because it is a strong acid, H2SO4 dissociates completely giving 2H plus N SO4 to minus. And this is the copper solid. Now since copper is less reactive than zinc, copper does not dissolve. But what happens? These H plus ions migrate towards the copper electrode. H plus ions migrate or move towards the copper electrode. And there what do they do? The hydrogen ion takes up electron from copper. Because of that copper becomes positively charged. Because hydrogen ions take up electrons from copper and what happens there? 2H plus ions take up electrons and form H2 gas. Now here you all have to remember students H plus is not out of the cell. Everything is happening inside the cell. This is just for you all to understand the changes taking place. Since I don't have space here, I have written it out. So electrons are taken by the H plus ions in the solution and they become H2 gas. What type of a reaction is this? This is reduction. And the electrode where the reduction takes place, we call it as the cathode. So now you all know it is the cathode. And then what happens? Electrons flow from zinc to copper. Current flows from copper to zinc. Right. So here with this, if you try to answer or fill up this, let us further consider the reaction occurring at the copper electrode in the above cell. What is happening there? 2H plus A equals take up electrons and form H2 gas. So there, what is reduction? When a species gains electrons, when we say species, it can be an atom, it can be an ion or it can be a molecule. When it gains electrons, it is known as reduction. When a species gains electrons, the reaction is known as reduction. So when we say species, again it can be an atom. Let's say chlorine atom, Cl taking up an electron becoming Cl minus chloride ion. That is reduction. 
or else a molecule. A molecule taking up electrons and becoming negatively charged molecules. Or else an ion, H plus ion, taking up electrons and becoming H2 gas. All those are considered as reductions. So when a species gains electrons, the reaction is known as reduction. And by convention, electrode where reduction occurs is the cathode. Like I said before, this never changes. Always the electrode where reduction occurs is the cathode. And here what is the cathodic half reaction or the reduction half reaction? Another name students. So reduction half reaction is also known as cathodic half reaction. So, what is the reduction half reaction or the cathodic half reaction? Same as this, same thing. To H plus aqueous ions taking up two electrons to give rise to H2 gas. So, therefore, copper becomes the positive electrode. So, here copper is the positive electrode. Why? Because H plus ions take up electrons, electrons from copper. These electrons are taken from the copper metal. That is why copper becomes positive and it is the cathode. You have to remember that. So if we summarize like we did before. So copper reduction Therefore, it is the cathode and it is the positive electrode, positive electrode. So, that is like the summary you have to remember. Copper, where reduction takes place because of that it is the cathode. And it becomes the positive electrode because electrons are taken from copper. H plus ions take electrons from copper or copper is giving electrons to H plus. So that is why it becomes the positive electrode. Is that clear students? So you have to remember always current flows from positive to negative. So copper to zinc. Whereas electrons flow from zinc to copper, negative to positive. So those are the things you have to keep in mind. If we look at this again, this is what happens near the copper electrode. Near the copper electrode, H plus ions that are obtained from H2SO4 travel or move towards the copper electrode. There, they take electrons from the copper electrode and they get reduced. H plus ions taking up electrons and becoming H2 gas. That is a reduction reaction. So, because reduction occurs there, copper is the cathode. And because electrons are taken from copper, it becomes the positive electrode. And here, this is the reaction. 2H plus aqueous taking up two electrons becoming H2 gas. And if you are to define all these reduction, when a species gains electrons, the reaction is known as reduction. And cathode, electrode where reduction occurs is the cathode. It is the cathode. It is the cathode. 
then reduction half reaction or what we can call as cathodic half reaction is this 2H plus A equals plus 2 electrons giving rise to H2 gas. Then positive electrode, copper is the positive electrode, why? Because H plus ions take up electrons from copper and that's the summary, copper reduction cathode and it becomes the positive electrode in an electrochemical cell. And also students, similar to this, now here reduction half reaction is known as cathodic half reaction. The same way in the previous slide, so here we have the oxidation half reaction that can be called as anodic half reaction, half reaction. Why? Because always oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. So when you are answering a question, if they ask you oxidation half reaction or anodic half reaction, they both are the same. The same way, Reduction half reaction and cathodic half reaction, they are both the same because always oxidation takes place at anode, reduction takes place at cathode. This is something you have to keep in mind student. So with that, I will move on to the next slide. The electrochemical reaction of the cell can be obtained by adding the reactions 1 and 2. So that also we have done before again to write. So, zinc losing electrons that is the first reaction then H plus taking up electrons and becoming H2 gas that is the second reaction. So, if you add them together you get zinc solid plus 2 H plus aqueous plus 2 electrons giving rise to zinc 2 plus aqueous losing 2 electrons and H2 gas. Zinc plus H2 plus plus 2 electrons on the at the beginning of the reaction then after the arrow, we have zinc 2 plus aqueous, 2 electrons and H2 gas. And out of that, you can cancel off the electrons. So finally, we get the cell reaction that is the balanced ionic equation that is this. Zinc solid plus 2 H plus aqueous gives rise to that then 2 plus A equals and H2 gas. That is the electrochemical reaction, but here of course it is the balanced ionic equation. This is the balanced ionic equation. To convert this, to the electrochemical reaction. Complete balanced equation, what do we need to do? We need to add sulphate ions as well. So, this is again, we also call this as the electrochemical reaction. Why? Because these are the changes taking place in an electrochemical cell, but they do have charges. That is why it is a balanced ionic equation. So, to convert it to balanced chemical equation, we have to add sulphate ions to both the sides. So, this is the balanced ionic equation. Then we get the complete equation where you have zinc solid H2SO4 aqueous giving rise to zinc sulphate aqueous and H2 gas. So, that is the balanced chemical equation. Chemical 
equation. Is that clear, students? So, with that, I am going to move on to the next slide. The following comparisons would be important for you to identify the anode and cathode of a given electrochemical cell. So, this is again very important for you all to identify the anode and cathode of a given electrochemical cell. For that, you need to recall the activity series. We will quickly do that first. You can remember potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, then in between you have hydrogen, then copper, mercury, silver, platinum and gold. Those are the metals that we consider in the activity series. Potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver, platinum and gold. So, in this, when we take zinc and copper, zinc is above copper. Now, this series continues. So, zinc is above copper in the activity series. So, zinc is more reactive, copper is less reactive. Similarly, you can select any other two metals also. Maybe you can take aluminium and lead or we can take zinc and iron or it can be iron and copper. Like that, we can take different combinations, even magnesium and iron. But you all know we don't take these elements. These metals, potassium, sodium, calcium, they are highly reactive. So, they, are, they show a very vigorous, very, very vigorous reaction with acids. We can't use them as electrodes. So, starting from magnesium, you can come up to copper. Mercury is a liquid metal and also these are all inert metals that you know. So, normally for an electrochemical cell, we can choose from these. Magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, copper, you can select any two. So, you need to know which is more reactive and which is less reactive. So, then if we come here. So, the metal placed higher in the activity series acts as the anode. So, now you can remember now student. We had zinc and copper. Zinc became the anode. This is higher in the activity series. So, the first one you can understand. The metal placed higher in the activity series acts as the anode and the metal placed lower in the activity series acts as the cathode. Copper was the cathode. So, this is again summary of what we did. Oxidation occurs at the anode. Here anode oxidation. So, here you can see students oxidation occurs at the anode. So, that was the oxidation and the reduction occurs at the cathode. So, here cathode it is the reduction. Then Anode becomes the negative terminal of the cell while the cathode becomes the positive terminal of the cell. So, anode, or anode becomes the negative terminal of the cell and cathode becomes the positive terminal of the cell. So, these are things that you need to remember in order to identify anode and cathode. Where, we do, where do we start? We start with the activity series. So, here zinc is more reactive, more reactive and copper is less reactive. Always the more reactive metal acts as the anode, less reactive metal acts as the cathode and oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction occurs at the cathode. And therefore, anode becomes the negative electrode, cathode becomes the positive electrode. So, in this, 
Zinc is the anode where oxidation takes place and it is the negative electrode. Copper is the cathode where reduction takes place and it is the positive electrode. So like I said, if you have different metals also, you should be able to identify what is the anode, what is the cathode, where, uh, what is the oxidation half reaction, reduction half reaction and also you should know the positive and negative electrodes. So that is what you need to understand from all these information. Is that clear students? So with that, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So this is a note that I have already told you all, you have to remember if you look at the cell, this is an electrochemical cell, anode is negative, cathode is positive. So here copper is the cathode, zinc is the anode and always electrons flow from negative to positive. So here you can see flow of electrons, negative anode to positive cathode, whereas conventional current I flows from positive electrode to negative electrode that is from cathode to anode. So like I told you all, electrons flow from zinc, this is the zinc metal to copper through the external circuit or the external conductor. At the same time, current flows from copper to zinc through the external conductor. Is that clear to you? So this is something you have to remember. So note, in a cell, electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. But according to the conventions in physics, the conventional current is marked as flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So the directions, direction of flow of electrons and the direction of conventional current. You have to remember that. So this is the introduction to an electrochemical cell students. So, so far in this chapter, I discussed one type of electrochemical cell where we had zinc and copper as the electrodes and you were able to understand all the reactions taking place, the cathode, anode, oxidation, reduction, half ionic equations, balanced ionic equation and the cell reaction. So that is related to one type of cell. With these students, I'm going to end this chapter and in the next chapter also, we will be discussing another electrochemical cell with different electrodes. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.